Old Stone was a mean man. Whole town of Kinbray knew that for entertainment he used to take pot shots at his dog. A good old girl, deserving better. One day, Stone was said to have got bad news from Montevideo. Folks saw him stride past the postmasters, kicking dust, spitting on the sidewalk, and cussing out the Goose Town Savings and Loan. Mr. Miller said he purchased a package of Illinois whiskey, and that was what they found later on, a broken bottle by the pump house well that had just gone dry. Must have hauled his rifle down where it hung by the stove and stomped out to the yard with a box of fresh shells, loaded and reloaded, pumped lead into the milk shed wall and cackled and gnashed his nasty teeth. His yellow tears skittered down his dry cheeks as the dark deed formed in his mind, the notion occurring to complete the thing for once and for all, and he whistled Betty to heel at his feet, and she sidled, shivering up, and imploringly searched for the better nature behind his red eyes as he pulled two sticks of dynamite from a tool bin and tied them to the poor bitch's tail, lit the long fuse, smacked her hind end, and sat down on the hole and watched through the open outhouse door as the dog took off yelping straight through the kitchen doorway and dove under the master's brass post bed with the eider down comforter pulled down in after her. No, 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 cried Stone, and he screamed with all his sawtoothed might, with the indignation of a man so wronged by creation, perverted by willful beasts, like a dog so dumb she couldn't even get blown upright. And he screeched her name and called her forth and condemned her disloyalty as the least best friend a most cursed man might have, a churlish cur who fought his dominion from the day she was whelped, who missed regular naps thinking up ways to undo him, him, him who now wailed like a ghost to get out, get out, get out of my pine board, tar paper, china platter house, god damn your four-legged soul. And Betty, hearing his breakdown without, and imagining herself the object of some grand reprieve at the hands of this passionate and lovable, if you really undertook to know him, but until then, deeply misunderstood failure of a man, and imagining, moreover, her lifelong ordeal at those knotted hands to be miraculously over and herself forgiven of the loathsome crime of having been his, dashed happily down the rock porch steps and full tilt, and with her master's heartfelt cries of no, 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 echoing across the wooded glade, leaped gladly into his all-crossed arms, and the two best friends saw eye to eye each bad goodbye 
and left Kinbray forever. <laughs>